Donc, c'était euh, le nom du groupe, c'est Lorano. 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 That's a band from uh, Madagascar. That, that, that was weird, but that was cool. Yeah. Mm. yeah. yeah. So, uh, I'm going to welcome uh, our first guest uh, for, for tonight. That's my brother from New York City. Uh, the guy who make me uh, DJing uh, at Otto's, great friend. Let's welcome uh, Pat, DJ Pat Pervert. Hey. Welcome, Pat. Hello, everyone. What's up, Hello, man? Pat. Good to meet everyone. How you doing? How you doing? Uh, it's great here. Good. Yeah. So we're going to welcome our second guest from New York City. Oh, too much guests. <laughs> oh, so sorry. many guests today. <laughs> right, welcome, uh, Dan Nastasi. Oh. Yo. Yo, hello. hello. <laughs> How you guys doing? Uh, it's great here. How you doing? Yeah, man, good. You got that Generation Records T-shirt on. Uh, yeah, and and it... <laughs> I'm gonna talk about it. Uh, it's a cool concert uh, tomorrow. Uh, no, Sunday. Uh, from Stigma, it's playing over there. Uh, benefit for the Generation Record. We we'll played a, a little video about it after. Yeah. You want to know the you want to know the truth of that the stigma show? Tell me. You know that that already was recorded, right? Oh, <laughs> oh. <laughs> it's 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 a false live. But it's no, true. it's not. It's, a, it's, it's like, not. But it's but a pre-recorded the way, live. The way that they have to do it here is that yeah. they can't just actually do a show at Generation Records right okay yeah, yeah so yeah. what they did was they organized them to go because our larry the hunter our you know the guitar player in kings never die he also plays guitar with stigma okay so the way they do it is that you actually have to go to a different location and mm -hmm. film it and even when they filmed it everybody's separated you know what i mean like Vinny was in a vocal booth and Larry was like 20 feet away. And, and so that's how they have to do it. But it's for a great cause. You yeah, know what sure. I mean? Sure, and sure. that's really the important thing. That, mm -hmm. That's the thing I hope people, whatever it is to get a ticket. You know, yeah. I tell people, even if you don't watch it, just buy a ticket. Like, and, and it's only ten dollars, I think. Yeah, it's ten it's, bucks. It's it's, it's it's ten bucks. It's it's nothing. So yeah, go for it. <laughs> right. And here's the thing: if people don't support these, save the stages, Generation Records, uh, Murphy's Law just did a St. Patrick's Day show, mm -hmm. and it was phenomenal. They were, you know, but they recorded it at a location and then they broadcast it. So it's it's just impossible with the way things are now here at least and the rules that are and people are getting used to living like this it's impossible to actually do it live from generation records you know so i'm sorry in the past in generation but now uh stigma played already i think once in a generation yeah uh, when uh rog uh did a beginning of his book when he uh when yeah. he started is Volcano. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. I um, actually, you know, I went to the recording. Oh, you went to the recording? Yeah, I went, it was last, it was Saturday. I went, it was over in Queens, and I went over there, and <laughs> I was at the recording. I mean, Uncle Vinny is a piece of work, man. <laughs> <laughs> he's like, Mr. I can't hear my vocals. You know, he's just a piece of work, man. You do it pretty well. <laughs> you have that golden mic? Hmm? You still have that golden mic? No, he didn't have a gold. He had whatever the studio gave them to use, you know. They were trying to figure it out. So, I don't know if you know, uh, but he's a DJ at Otos. So, how you so, doing, man? Hey, how are you, man? All right, all right. Where, where do you DJ? Yeah, DJ down over at uh, Outer Shrunken Head. 
I do the uh, Thursday punk rock happy hour. Oh, at, at Otto's. Yeah, yeah. Oh. Yeah, about 15 cool. years now. I can't believe it. Oh. Are you doing it right now? No, no, I did it last night. I'm hungover. <laughs> no, but what I'm saying is, you like, you're still yeah, doing it? Currently. Yeah, currently. Every Thursday. Oh, awesome. So when is it? Is it next Thursday again? Yeah, next Thursday. Oh. Between, it's a happy hour between 5 and 10. Been doing it forever. All right, so shoot me the address after the after we hook up here. Text me your. I'll send you my cell phone. Definitely. I'll give you my cell phone. Definitely. You want it now? Yeah, sure. Right. It's uh. I don't the address. write it down. To, you don't. <laughs> What's that? Uh, people on Twitch, people are, are live on Twitch, so I, I'm just saying, don't don't write it down. Don't don't write it down. It's just for Pat. <laughs> <laughs> it's not for you. It's we all see good. you, everybody. It's all good. Whatever. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, definitely. I shoot. I shoot you a text. I'll give you like the uh, link to it. Yeah, that'd be awesome, man. We go. Great. So, as we talked before about that uh, generation uh, stuff, here is uh, a little video uh, that Uncle Vinny did uh, promotion for that event. Yeah. Uh, we played it. Yeah. Let's listen to that, and after we will have another guest, uh, an old friend of yours, Dan. Uh, from Andrew Crew 69 DB8. Yeah, DB8. Yeah. Danny Angel. Yeah, Danny Angel. It will come right after this little promotion for Vignette Generation. I have. I'm getting blinded by that light. Blinded by the light. <sighs> okay. Ready? Yes, sir. Coming out of the water. Hey everybody, I'm Vinny Stigma from Agnostic Front, and on March 28, Revive the Music, a benefit for Generation Records. Check it out. Remember, it'll be old school style. Stigma's gonna play March 28, Revive the Music, Generation Records, in support of my friend Mark and the rest of the guys and gals that work there. Remember, hardcore lives. Nice, looks like you're ready for a brawl. <laughs> <laughs> nice. So for the Belgian people, if one day, if you go to New York City, go check Generation Records. That place is going to drive you crazy because every time I'm, I'm there, I'm seeing how my wallet is small compared <laughs> to what they have over there. I'm a record collector. I love records. I love vinyl. And when I get there, I'm just going crazy. Uh, Are you guys talking about Generation? You're talking about the, uh, the one near uh, Bleecker? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I didn't even know it was still open. It's been a minute since I've been there. Oh, yeah. Wow. I actually, I did a podcast from there with uh, the Brooklyn Blast Furnace. We did it live from Generation Records. Mm -hmm. And it, it's, it, the thing is also like, it doesn't look that big from the outside, but when you go in, yeah. there's like fucking yeah. downstairs yeah, level. Yeah, downstairs, up, yeah. It's huge. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, can you say what was the podcast and where we can find it? Or oh, the, Brook the Brooklyn Blast Furnace. Okay. Uh, Jimmy uh, it's Jimmy Ferrari. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, that's a, it's a great pod. He has great guests. Like not 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 even just music guests now. Like mm -hmm. he has uh, uh, wrestlers and like it's it's pretty wide. And he has. Um, he has a whole network of podcasts called yeah. Dark Satellite Media. So it's the Brooklyn Blast Furnace, and it's also Ill Street News, and getting it like there's there's a bunch of podcasts all underneath one umbrella. But okay. I don't know about you guys, but like I love listening to podcasts, especially yeah. now. Uh, I just enjoy the fact I like it's like this, like you just get together. And you could talk about whatever. It's not like yeah, an right. interview, or it's just like shooting the shit. You know what I mean? You're just 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 talking. So uh, I love listening to him. I dig it. And uh, there's, you can listen to all the old podcasts. We have that online. I should put the like. Uh, I will put the link uh, on a big sale uh, page. And Thank you. <laughs> go check the old one with Vinny Stigma. He did one so I think one or two podcasts. But the first one, it's hilarious. Like every podcast, uh, if you get Jim, uh, if you get stigma somewhere, it's always hilarious. Yeah, it's pure uh, entertainment. Yeah. Okay, let's welcome Danny Angel Crew. Hey, yo yo. Hey. Yeah. How's it going, man? 
What time was he? Yeah, man. How you been? Yeah, good, good. You, you know, you, you look exactly the same, man. It's only been <clears throat> like 30 years, but. <laughs> <laughs> you too, man. I can, uh, you know. I was yeah, with, uh, was yeah. I was with Booge today. No, oh, dude. How's and going? he was playing me uh, a Deviate video from some festival. <laughs> he was at yeah. it. I told him that we were going to get together today and we were going to talk. Yeah, okay. Okay, good. Good. It's nice yeah, to see you, man. Yeah, you it's too. Been a long time, long time, too long. Yeah, that's for sure. You know, I lay low. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Did you stop working for your dad finally? And uh, remember, you were, you were going to, uh, after Mucky Pop, you were going to, uh, to yeah. your, your dad's factory, whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Well, my dad actually just passed away from uh, COVID. Oh, sorry to hear that. So, yeah, you hit the sore subject, Danny. You just, you know. No, I'm really sorry. I'm going straight to the point, man. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, in any okay. case, yeah, you know, that was, it, 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 it was a crazy time, actually, because after, like, after... The last Mucky Pup tour that I actually did was the Now tour. You know, we did Now. And then yeah. we did that tour where Biohazard opened up on that tour. That was the last, like, full, like, make a record, go on tour, the touring cycle. And uh, right before I left to go on that tour, that's when I met my wife. Like, literally two weeks before I left to go on that tour. So when I got home from that tour... I was really feeling like, man, I've never made a dime playing music. I love this girl. I got to like, you know, I knew I was going to marry her the second I met her. So, you know, it's like one of those things. I made a choice. I made a decision to raise a family and to get married. And then when we started Dog Eat Dog, you know, none of us had any idea of what it would maybe become. You know what I mean? It was literally four best friends just making music together. And for me, it was awesome because I didn't want to I didn't want to make funny music anymore. You know, I di I didn't want to like I didn't want it to be like funny. And you know, it's crazy because I literally was engaged to be married when while we were like why while Dog Eat Dog was kind of like playing the, 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 all the shows in the city. Then we got signed to Roadrunner. Then we started to branch out. Then we, you know, got the EP came out. And then we got the Bad Brains tour in Europe. And all that was happening as we were recording Alberto Kings. And again, I had to like make a decision. Like I'm married, uh, you know, like I'm, my wedding date was April 30th, 1994. And we got offered to open for Biohazard on that tour. And that was where it was like, wait a minute, like I'm going to miss my wedding to go on tour. And so that was really the point where I really made the decision that, you know, I made a commitment to get married and have a family. And that's, that's ultimately what I did. And, and, and the crazy thing is now, you know, my, my older son is 26 years old. My younger yeah. son is 24 years old, and my daughter is 21. So, my is 21 as well. yeah, wow, man, isn't yeah, it crazy? She was born, uh, she was, she was born in February uh, 28, uh, 2000. So, wow, uh, yeah, my daughter was born uh, December 29th, 1999, one day before. Uh, oh, yeah. oh okay, yeah. okay, okay, okay. Yeah. I remember that year like crazy, like it was yesterday. Yeah, me yeah, too. Actually, yeah, actually, yeah. Flies. yeah, yeah. Uh, it goes by, but uh, you know, it's an old man's show tonight. Uh, no, <laughs> <laughs> I'm Listen, here to <laughs> uh, Danny okay, on a positive reason. note. I really right? respect fatherhood, but well, of course, uh, it's the best thing I ever did in my life. Is yeah, it's my daughter, man. Yeah, it's my yeah. daughter. So, uh, so Absolutely. all goes for uh, all the Jesus. Yes, yes, of course, of course. But, yeah. Uh, yeah, I will never go back to this. And uh, I still miss uh, the time when she's 
pulled me over and jokes at me and go blah 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 and, and whatever. And I just told like, okay, okay, you know, I'll see you in three or four weeks. You know, she's uh, she's really independent and uh, she goes to high school and stuff and uh, everything goes good. That's fantastic. Actually, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. This it, it is everybody's in good health. So beautiful, good. beautiful. Yeah. Well, okay. listen, Danny, I'm fucking back. So no time lost. I've seen the video clip, man. I've seen the video clip. It's, it's nice. Man. It's nice. When you coming back to Europe, man? Uh, you know, with all this coming shit, we're supposed to be uh, on tour in uh, in 2022. But uh, but uh, let's see, man. You gotta come to Europe again. Uh, like as soon as they will let us. Yeah. You know, we're there. It's as simple as that. Yeah. Yeah. But look. Yeah. I got to be honest, like, I don't know how you guys feel, but, you know, me and Larry started this band, like, really, like, two years ago, but let's say, like, a year and a half ago, right? Uh -huh. And, you know, I don't, for me, I just want to make music that I love, and not that it's just for us, because obviously anytime you write or you create music, you want people to hear it, right? But, mm -hmm. you know, we're like brand new. Like at the, you know, at, at my age, it's like the third real band that I ever started. So mm -hmm. this is brand new. And, you know, our first EP came out literally five, six weeks before COVID shut down the world, right? Yeah. So, and... You know, and, and it was doing, like, you know, pretty good. Like, I think at least, you know, it takes time. Like, you have to build from, you got to start in the basement. And that's the way it is. That's the way it should be. Um, but my point is this. Nobody should really give a shit about, like, you know, my little band that we started. And, and I can't wait to get out on the road. And we're actually recording our full-length record right now. Uh, so the EP, the new EP just technically came out today, but we're already recording our, our, our actual album, like the full length album. There it is. Bingo. That's the EP. Yeah. But, uh, you know, we have plenty of time. My real concern and the thing that I think that the, the hardcore community or the music community in general, we really all need to get together and support the bands that this is their life. This is how they feed their children, right? This is how they pay their rent. Uh, you know, the bands that have been nonstop, 30 years straight, 30, those are the, those are the bands that the, the, the community really needs to support. So what I always tell people is please, like if, Agnostic Front is selling a T-shirt. Buy the fucking shirt, right? If if Pete if Pete is selling a shirt, if they have a GoFundMe for the crew, like mm -hmm. if you have five bucks, just donate five. Like give what you can because these bands have really supplied the soundtrack to our life. You know what I mean? They've given yes. us so, and me too. Like. You know, you know, everybody, anybody that knows me knows, you know, like, I'm the biggest sick of it all fan in the world. Like, I love everything. When I heard Just Look Around, that changed everything for me, right? Like, mm -hmm. to me, they are, they're my favorite band, okay? But these guys, like, they gave their entire life to this music, and they haven't been able to work for 13 That's months. And, you know, so that, that's world, the one thing I would always right? tell people is, you know, the bands that this is how they feed their family, we need to do everything we can to help support those bands. That's where every dime of extra money should, if you have 10 bucks to buy, uh, if you want to download a record, download a record that from a band that you know this is how they support their family. You know what I'm saying? Uh, Generation Records. Uh, Vinny's, you know, Vinny, they, you know, they're doing the show for Generation Records. Like, Vinny, Vinny, don't you think, don't you think that the format is changing now? 
that uh, maybe you know we're not going to be able to go on tour and make money like we used to do and uh, just make the sacrifice and stop working and do stuff and go on the road all the time because everything is changing for the moment. For sick of it all, for mad ball, for all those bands, yeah. for, Bobin, for, for all those bands. I can't, I can't fucking imagine how they, they, they end up at the end of the month and pay for the fucking right for the fucking band for the fucking thing because that's that's all they have. They, right. they, they don't do okay like like a five six tools a year right i'm talking especially about my ball i mean i mean that's all the fucking income they have yeah and right now right now you know everybody's cut down for this shit. i believe i believe right now on my you know on my side the best way to 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 you know just to make sure that i'm doing something while this fucking time while i'm here and just to produce, produce. Just come out with some video clips produce 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 as much as you can produce Video clip, produce new CD, and take the time. It's like a, you yeah. know, it's like in fucking prison. Just walk out, then you gotta walk out. You gotta do your stuff, and just uh, you know, spend the time which is allocated to you to be able to uh, to do all this stuff. So you, now you got an EP. Then you need to think about the new fucking record. Yeah. Think about the record, and think of also producing, producing, producing for the time. Yeah. Being, because we're, we're gonna be shut down for 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 what? Maybe another year. Who knows? Uh, and, uh, I, 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 and, and this man, is, I, this is so fucked up, man. Yeah. I gotta be honest, Danny. If this goes another year, you're not gonna have some of these bands anymore. And I'm not saying those bands that we just yeah, spoke yeah, about, but, yeah, yeah. I, but there comes a point where, you know, how long is it gonna take for everybody to get their shot, right? I lucked out. My wife, I feel bad, but I've already been vaccinated. And and I feel terrible. Why? Because I got my because there's people far more in need than me. But oh, okay, you know what I'm saying? Like I lost my father to this virus. My father yeah. though was 86 years old, and my father lived a great life. Okay, but he was living down in Florida, and he got a high strain, and Danny it fucking killed him in 14 days. Like he, they told me he had COVID on August 20, uh, August 24th on April, on September 8th, he was fucking dead as a doornail. So in 14 days, I watched my father lose 40 pounds and just get decimated, like torn apart. Right. So at least in the States, you have people that are on the computer all day long looking for a place where can I get vaccinated? Really what the governments should do is they should have started from the top, from the eldest age bracket, and they should have just went straight down the list. That would have That's been, what... to me, that would have been uh, the more intelligent way to go about it. Because yeah, that's, here, that, that's what they're trying to do here in Belgium, and this is not the best way. This is not the no? best way. No, it's go, it's going very slowly and very. It's very. We're all very just, confused just, about it. And yeah. I'm gonna. I'm gonna. We're gonna make a little break for some uh, music when you're talking about buying stuff, uh, and uh, we talked about Vinny before. So that's something you gotta buy, guys, and that's a very nice. Yeah. Look yeah, man. Wallet. And we're gonna play the, the video of that song, uh, the Raise Your Glass, uh, with uh, Gallo and uh, and Vinny in it. And awesome. that's how we talk more. Uh, I appreciate that. So, and uh, check the album, uh, Kings Never Die Official.com. Uh, check on Facebook, you can you put all the links, uh, you can download it. You just pay a little stuff, you don't need to buy the vinyl or the CD, but. At least buy it online. Well, at least, uh, you know, I wish I could go to a concert to buy it. So, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we, <laughs> we always do. <laughs> Me too. Let's play, let's play the video and we talk more after. All so, right, killer. Okay. People don't know Kings Never Die, and this is, yeah, that's not the typical song because this one with Vinny, you know, Vinny have his voice, and uh, it's always great to see him. Raise your glass. He's the I like it. Nice. I haven't, I haven't yeah, seen man. that video in about six months. <laughs> uh, oh, you know what? Good. <laughs> it's great to see Mike in it too, because uh, Mike it's should like be in the show. The house. He's my uh, eyebrow brother. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, and see Vinny, so. <laughs>
you have to see more. Actually, huh? actually uh, I was talking to, uh, to Fab and I was watching uh, your video clip that you sent me, uh, Fab. And um, I was telling him that, uh, that actually you, you guys remind me of uh, Blood for Blood. Of who? What video was it? Blood for uh, Blood, man. Oh, blood, blood for Blood. Yeah, I've heard that before. Yeah. I've heard blood, that before. Yeah, yeah. And, and actually, the, the stand was like, uh, yeah. What video was it? Uh, pure Gold. Gold. Pure Gold. The last, uh, pure Gold uh, reminds uh, me of the Blood for Blood. Man. Of the new EP uh, during the show. Really? You yeah. know... It's it's uh, it's funny because when I wrote Raise a Glass, like the original idea for it, I the second I wrote it, I envisioned Vinny singing the song <laughs> because it like it's funny. Like I've read a couple places like some people have been like, it sounds like pirate core. You know, it's like raise your glass in the air, you know, so. Uh, when we when we went in the studio to record the vocals for it, it was really incredible. Like I had the chorus, you know, like the sing along chorus part, but we really just went in the studio and we kind of like wrote all the verses and the arrangement together. So it was really like an organic, like people don't really write songs like that anymore. You know what I mean? So and. That's kind of why we did the video like that. It was kind of like we were in the studio tracking the song and Dylan was like waiting and then we all leave and meet at the show. You know what I mean? So it's kind of cool, you know. It's like all of the music or the songs that 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 we're writing now they all have like a story. Like we're not writing about bullshit. You know what I mean? Like it all has meaningful purpose in our lives in some way and i think when you get older you really like that becomes really important you know what i mean i'm sure you could relate with that you know and same thing with pure gold you know i i we had the song written actually our bass player jay came up with the original riff and then i wound up you know, we I just wrote like a song around his riff and it just expanded. And we, we tracked that song actually with Jerry Farley, uh, the producer, Jerry Farley. And then... Is that Jerry from Up, up From Nothing? Up For Nothing? No, Jerry Farley is... Oh. Uh, he produced the last Sick of It All record. Oh. And he's worked, you know, he he's worked with a, a ton of bands. You know, okay. he's really... I thought, was, I thought it was Jerry from uh, Up For Nothing. You ever heard of those guys? No, no, I haven't. But South I'll Brooklyn. check it out. South Brooklyn. Oh, yeah. um, that video, uh, that was A7, right? Yeah, that, yeah, that was A7, yeah, yeah. Niagara. Yeah. And uh, we actually, the first show we played was at Niagara. And then that, we filmed that. The second time we played at Niagara, we filmed that, like that day. You know? I think last time I was at Niagara, I think Leeway was playing. How long ago was that? God, that had to be... Say at least a year and a half. Oh, I played. You were, okay. So I, played that guitar, <laughs> I played guitar. I played guitar. Well, when Ed, Eddie, I met up with Eddie like two or three years ago, I actually went to go see Leeway play out like in West Jersey. And he had Matty Pasta playing guitar with him, who is fucking great. First of all, he's a great person, but excellent guitar player. He's actually playing in Sub Zero right now. Ah, so um, that's, yeah. That's so Sub Maddie was Louis playing Louis? with Eddie. That's Louie, right? What's that? Sub Zero. That's Lou. Yeah. Louis, you know, the same, yeah, same. yeah. How and, uh, they, they, still, they still producing stuff. Who's that? Uh, what the Sub Zero? They still producing stuff. Yeah, they just recorded. <clears throat> I don't know how many songs, but they just released uh, something called House of Grief, and it's Lou. And it's Matty Pasta's playing guitar. They had Riggs play drums on it. Who's a, you know, Riggs played in Hatebreed, phenomenal drummer. He's out in California, uh, but it's it's really good, man. It's really good. And uh, but in any case, I met up with Eddie. I went to go see Leeway play, <clears throat> and what he calls Leeway NYC. And uh, right away, we struck up a conversation, and he was like, "Yo, uh, you know." 
you got any songs? You know, you got any stuff? You, you know, you, you got a song maybe like Leeway, you know? And I was like, as a matter of fact, I do. I have this song because I had started writing about three years ago. I really started like writing again, like at night, pick up my acoustic. Like I was just in, in the habit of writing. And I had this song that I wrote called I'm Your Pusher. I got a and, video of it. Yeah, I'm in, the, yeah, I'm in that video too. <laughs> but <clears throat> I told Eddie, I said, you know, I got this song I wrote that is like an old school, it's like an, it's like a leeway song. So we wound up getting together and we, we, we jammed a little bit and then we wound up tracking that little I'm Your Pusher uh, seven inch. We tracked those two songs. I wrote the music and, uh, you know, I had like the, the catch line and I'm Your Pusher, like, I'm your pusher, bam, bam. I had like a little line but Eddie, uh, you know, Eddie wrote the lyrics and it was really fun, man. It was great. It was like, it was the first thing I had done in years and it really sparked me. I was like, man, I miss this so much. You know what I mean? And, you know, the problem was I was, everything I was writing was way more like hardcore punk rock. It wasn't like leeway material. I just so happened to have a song that I really fit. I really thought did like the leeway name some justice, right? There's never going to be anything as great as AJ uh, writing leeway songs, right? Like to me, that is like in a, in its own like rare air. But I thought that the song did the leeway name a little justice you know what i mean i think it was a good song i i like it uh, maybe we can listen to it i don't know if you heard it dan i know you're a big leeway fan yes yes yeah 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 i love this band. Uh, yeah because uh for people who don't know dan being in doggy dog murky pup leeway murphy's law uh all borough kings anastasi and now hey, no no we don't talk about that and now <laughs> King never <died. laughs> that was the worst fucking mistake that was the worst mistake i ever made in my life i gotta tell you man. what just just doing my own record was just it was just a bad decision man. oh come on man <laughs> no it was it was it was uh first of all the record was um it just wasn't good enough in my opinion and the quick story behind it is that you know obviously dog eat dog was like you know jumping off and i couldn't i couldn't commit to being in a band like that touring eight nine months a year i just couldn't do it i made a commitment to my family and i thought it was a good idea like you know and i had you know, a couple record companies, you know, and, and I think the thing was they were like, hey, you know, this this is the guy that like wrote some of those doggy dog songs. Like, you know, how bad could it be? And uh, the problem was when I did it, it was really like, hey, uh, you have five weeks to record the record and you got to be on tour and, you know, and I was put like in a time crunch. And at the time, I really wanted to like start a band and have my own little band. And I, I, I kind of got like forced into, I would say, uh, doing that. And I just, I just have to say that it was, you know, I'm, I'm not proud of it. I would say that. Uh, I mean, like you mentioned, All Borough Kings. That All Borough Kings record we did, me, Sean, and Dave. I love that record. Like to me, we put the work in and for the time, you know, I'm proud of that record. But uh, but when I look back at, at the record I did on my own, I, I, I just don't think it was good enough, you know? I don't, I don't agree with you, man. I don't agree with you because because actually it kept you going, man. Because actually you could have, you could have skipped that little passage, skipped that little time and uh, just do nothing. 
and at least you stayed in the scene, you stayed doing your stuff, you stayed playing music. You want to you want to know how many people I know that that they just stop playing music and just go to the family and uh, and they just stop. And uh, yeah. you, you you're talking to me about uh, doing not good stuff. You want me to tell you about not doing good stuff? <clears throat> Every time I'm doing a record, I'm like it's not good enough. And then we go for the next one, and the next one I'm trying to do better. And then I'm going and better and better and better. Right. That's, that's the way it goes, man. But you can't stop playing music, or you you, you, you should not have a have any remorse on what you did because at least you, you kept going man yeah. all right you know I, all I, people I, you know you, you can take a break for for well you rather take a break for for 20 years and then uh, come back and, and just oh i'm gonna go back to music or just if it's your life man you just stay in it and yeah. you just play music that's it that's it i, I mean, wouldn't know I, I would go for regrets man well but i'm regretting i'm regretting my record with uh, 69. <laughs> yeah, but at the same time, but at the same time, but at the same time, at the same time, you know, you know, that that record made me who I am. Yeah. So, so you know, and then I went with Deviate, and then I went with Intercrew, and a whole bunch of shitty stuff. Yeah. And then it, you know, finally, you have to start somewhere, you have to keep going somewhere, and then you have to end somewhere. And uh, and I think I think it's good, you know, as long as we love, you, you like you know music. Keep playing music, man. Don't give a fuck about what people think, or, or you know, if really you want to, uh, to to come out with a record every twenty years because you think it's not good enough. Yeah, that's also that's also something you have to deal with. But uh, but at the same time, man, I'm glad you still. Hey, look at that, man. After twenty five years, I'm still talking to you on the on the fucking stream shit. Yeah, which is you incredible. Imagine? You will play. You will play. You will play fucking music, and I won't be talking to you anymore. Yeah, because because the true. connection the connection some somehow will be lost, man. Yeah, yeah. And hey, look, uh, you know see? what? Every and I'm great. And I'm grateful for this. See? Yeah, me too, man. Yeah. It's yeah, it's. I gotta be honest. It's it's really nice to see you. Oh, <laughs> it really nice. is. Uh, I'm a, I'm well, a nice we got, guy, we, we have <laughs> me and Danny have some stories from uh, 1988 that. Uh... <laughs> oh, oh, wait, wait, 1988. Yeah, 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 yeah. Actually, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Yeah, and you know what? Still right now, and I'm telling you, I've been on tour with, with so many fucking bands, even Motorhead and Cypress Hill, whatever. Yeah. And I'm telling you that the, my best fucking tour was a Monkey Pop one. And every time I was looking forward for another tour, I went on tour right after that. We went on tour with Excel and, uh, and Wehrmacht. Right. It was never the same. Never the same. Never the well, same. Well, man, you know what? We were young and full of life. That was great. And hungry. Nice, and, yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. it was it was it was the greatest experience of my life up to that point. Like, you know, who would have thought? You know, I I think I don't even know. I, I was like seventeen years old, right? Yeah. Like yeah. eighteen was, years old. It was fucking uh, crazy. I think I think, I, I think it was nineteen, man. Um, uh, I should be. I'm fifty four. So right. I don't know how old you are. I'm I'm oh, only thirty nine. Thirty nine. Yeah, I'm 39. Yeah. Get the fuck out of here. All right. I'm, I'm 51. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I am. I'm 51. I am. 30, 39, I would have been, you know, it's like a, you would have been a, my little uh, little brother, eight years old, coming to the concert. But, uh, yeah. but uh, yeah, 51, you see, you see, I got three three more years, so so it's with the same in the same stuff, man. Yeah. Well, those good. were good You're times, looking good. Man. You're looking good. You're looking they good, were, 51. They were good times, I'll tell you. And let's play wow. that uh, Lee Wayne video. And uh, by the way, with Master Z, I think you play with Deviate at the Duke Festival in 96, I think. Yes, true. Uh, yeah. Was. And then uh, and then I think Doggy Dog actually headlined that night. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And yeah. I remember that yeah. too with Murky Purple and 69. It was a crazy party. Well, then you're just as old as us. I'm 50. Yeah, <laughs> I'm close to fifty. I'll be fifty in uh, September. You know what, man? Ages uh -huh. like they say it all the time, but I'm September? like, I'm so grateful Danny, to be healthy Danny, and. Danny, I'm, I'm sorry to cut you. Remember my old girlfriend Christy? Right Who's that? Remember my old, old, my old right girlfriend here. Christy. Christy. I don't. Christy, that blonde girl who was coming to the concert. She was American. I was going out with her. At that time, we were on tour. Was you don't remember? I I, I don't remember. remember. I'm sorry. She, she was from Iowa. She Iowa? From Iowa. Yeah, she was from Iowa, man. Did you marry her? I, no, I left everything and I went over there and then uh, she was uh, she was shitty on me. 
Um, but I, I've sold I've, I've sold all my fucking stuff and I've I left to, for Iowa and I, I stayed over there for six months and then I went back to New York and uh, and then uh, John took me took me and said you know fuck fuck this bitch and I right. stayed for a couple of weeks in New York in uh, New Jersey and then I went back uh, to Brussels. Crazy. Man. Good, man. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'm your Persia from the new way. <laughs> all right, killer. Crazy. I've never seen that video. You never seen it? No, not that version. I don't think that's the original version. And I think that's uh John on the drums, right? Yeah, it is. Yeah. Yeah, it's Booch. It's Booch. Uh who's on drums now with uh the Kings Never Die? Huh. <laughs> um, <laughs> <next question. laughs> well, I'll say this. We uh when we first tracked the first pieces of music, uh John Booge played drums for us because uh he was really doing us a favor. He was really doing me a favor. Uh you know, but John has you know really had no interest of being in a band. Uh, so, you know, John's been my best friend since I'm 14 years old. You know, we do everything together. So, uh, John played drums on the original tracks. And then after John, we wound up hooking up with Steve Gallo, uh, from, you know, who played drums in Agnostic Front, you know, Mike's brother, Steve. And, uh, we really, I really thought that Steve was just going to be the full-time drummer, you know, and... I think what happened was, I, I'm not sure if Steve really loved what we were doing. You know, Steve is is a great songwriter, and Steve really loves uh, more like thrash, yeah. like metal, um, thrash metal. Yeah. That's really what he loves. And I certainly wouldn't want anybody to play something that he didn't love to do. Uh, and I think he was just in another place. And we actually tracked Pure Gold, and we tracked uh, Stand For It All is another song we have coming out on the uh, Back to New York Hardcore Roots compilation is coming out in April. And we contributed a song to that. Drew Stone asked us to do a song. So we have a song coming out on that. And in the interim, everything we've done is really about when we actually uh, record the full length record, right? Like, you know, we rec Raise a Glass has four songs on it. The new EP has three new songs and it has, uh, it has two remixes of the first two videos we did. But everything has been about when we make the Kings Never Die record, you know? And, you know, we started rehears rehearsing and really fine tuning the material for the record and you know it was it was just evident that steve really it wasn't something that he really wanted to do and so i picked up the phone <clears throat> and you know a friend of mine for like 30 years uh you know from day one i i reached out and called up uh, Danny Schuler from Biohazard, and I really, you know, I was, you know, I just asked him flat out if he wanted to, to at least get together and work on music. And at that time, uh, you know, Danny was like doing a bunch of other stuff, and so I called him up when we were getting together to start preparing to to record the record, and I just asked him. I said, "Listen, man, like in my mind." you are like the perfect sound for our band. And, you know, it was really pretty simple. Uh, you know, we got, me and Danny got together and I showed him a bunch of stuff that, that, that I had written, stuff that the band had written. And we basically locked ourselves in a studio for like five, six weeks. And me and Danny wound up basically putting together 
uh, the new record that we're recording right now. So, uh, you know, more than anything, Danny, Danny's not just a drummer. You know, Danny Schuler is a songwriter. And even more important, Danny's just like a phenomenal person. He's just a good person. And everybody that is in Kings Never Die, you know, we really are like family. Everybody is a, a fantastic, good person. And Danny is like perfect, really fits right into everything that we believe in. And the best thing about Danny is like, you know, Danny is like, if, and he said it, he's like, if I'm gonna do something, it's, I, it's gotta be the, it's gotta be great. It's got to be something that we create and everybody feels and loves and thinks is the best we could do. So the reality is that, you know, we're we're actually recording the record and uh, Danny's not only playing drums, but we're literally writing and recording the record together as we do it. So, uh, you know, whether that's going to be forever I, I got to be honest, I don't even, it doesn't even matter. We're just making music that we love together. So uh, obviously I hope that this long term is something that he wants to, you know, look, I mean, this record is his. Like it's as much his as it is mine or Dylan, the singers or anybody else. Like we're creating this together. And so if Danny wants to, uh, continue and play with us forever. It's his to do. You know, if if Biohazard gets back together, then obviously I'm I'm pretty certain that that's going to be his. Uh, you know that that's his baby. You know that's his life. You know so, but at this point, it doesn't matter to any of us, him included. We're just doing something that we love to do, and you know I can promise you that this record, and people say this all the time. But this record that we're making is absolutely the best complete album, at least that I've ever done. Uh, I can't say it's the best thing he's ever done. You know, he's they've made some great records. You know what I mean? But, but I'll tell you that we love what we're doing and we love doing it together. And that's right now, that's the only thing that matters. So, uh, you know. And he's a very cool guy that I can uh, sometimes a bit crazy. I remember him at a Dynamo Open Air. Yeah. He was a guy who had a bike at the backstage because you've been, you've been Dynamo Open Air, you know how big it is. And who you see on a bike going from place to place, Danny Schurer. Yeah. <laughs> I, yeah. Sure I mean, look, if you know anybody that knows Danny, I mean, Danny is just aces, man. I mean, he is such... He's such a good person, uh, and he's obviously uh, just a. I mean, I I cannot wait for people to hear, you know, like his, him playing the drums. You know, it's just incredible, and uh, you know, especially in our band, like the drums are up in the front. Like our band is about the drum, like the beat, you know, and. Uh, you can imagine, uh, I think everybody can kind of imagine what uh, what might be coming down the pipe. You know what I mean? So, I mean, I'm, I couldn't be happier and I am so grateful just for the opportunity to be able to still uh, be able to do this. But more importantly, to be able to do it with the people that I'm able to do it with is like, you know, I feel blessed. Like it's... It really is, uh, it's like, you know, a gift from God. I think that's, and when I hear, I listen to the, the old EP, uh, I'm gonna put back that up. So yeah, yeah. so people go by that. Uh, I say that every week uh, in this show, uh download fucking metallica for free download all those but uh buy your local band buy them shirt buy them uh ep cds whatever you want but uh yes the real thing you have to buy uh yeah 
And obviously, the place to get it in Europe is uh, our friends at Cortex Records, obviously. But it seems like uh, it's going to be late on Cortex because I had a pre order uh, DP. And uh, I think it's gonna take uh, maybe two or three weeks uh, to get it. So. Right. I'm pretty. I'm. I mean, the actual release date is today. Yeah, today is the day that that the EP was was released. But I don't even look at that. Like we released the song Pure Gold like two three weeks ago, and and, and a video. Uh, and then last uh, like five days ago, Blood Blast just released another song minor threats and next week we're going to release another like we have a video for another it's not even a video it's like uh you know like a lyrical playthrough but you know the important like the thing is when you make something that you love you just want people to be able to hear it so of course if somebody wants a physical copy uh we'd be more than grateful if if you bought it but the reality is, I don't care. Like, you know, if you're gonna download music, download it from iTunes, because at least the artist makes two pennies. You know what I'm saying? But if not, I don't care if they steal it. Like, I like I I just want people to hear our music. That's all. You know, that's the payoff. Do you know if that's gonna come out in uh, on vinyl? No. No, you know, the EP is not going to come out on vinyl because of two reasons. <clears throat> One, we 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 just I we could not afford to put it out on vinyl. Uh, and uh, the first two EPs um, came out on Upstate Records, which is really a family run uh, and and outstanding people like. Uh, Mario and Kim uh, Kanjemi are great people and they believed in what we were doing and they gave us an outlet to be able to release our music rather than just doing it totally by ourselves. Uh, but financially, you know, like we just could not afford to, to, to release it on vinyl. Uh, so... You know, and the other thing is, you know, like we're making a record right now and technically we don't have a record company, you know, so everything we've been doing is completely DIY. Like, and I mean complete. Every video you see, like I made it on my, on my, on my Mac. Like we don't, we can't afford to hire somebody to do our videos. We can't afford, we just can't afford it. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm certainly not. Uh, you know, we're not like wealthy people. We're doing this because we love to do it and the guys are making a sacrifice so that we can do it. But I can't expect people to invest money in printing vinyl and, you know, when, when we, we don't even have a record contract, you know? So obviously the record that we're making, we're looking for a partner. You know, like we're looking for, again, uh, just good people that believe in what we're doing. And I wanted to ask you a question. Who's, who's even out there anymore? Uh, like that's uh, as far as like we're talking, uh, it's a uh, Danny. Yeah. Company wise you heard uh, Andrew that, Crew? That would pick something like that up anyway. Uh, I can't. I can't hear. Who would pick something like that up anyway? Like in these days, like what record companies are out there now? I mean, that would pick up like a, a hardcore record or something like that these days. Uh, I mean, at least in New York based. Uh, I honestly, I don't, I don't know, but I do know this. I do know that there are outstanding labels that can market the record, right? That can at least market it where, where it could be found, where people can see it, uh, you know, where we're on our own. I mean, we're only, we're only able to do so much. Yeah. You know what I mean? I mean, like this Instagram and Facebook, like I have no idea what I'm doing. None of us. We don't, I mean, I, I don't, you know, everybody's telling me, oh my God, you should be able to get all these followers. And I don't even care. I don't care how many followers. I don't care. It, it's not important to me. You know what I mean? I, it's, I'm making music that I love to make. That's all I care about. Of course, I want, I'd love for people 
to have access to it. I, you know, you want people to enjoy what you're doing uh, when you're making and putting your like heart and soul into making the record that you always wanted to make. You know, yeah, you gotta do you know, some love. even financially, like we've sacrificed a lot. Uh, you know, our record is being paid for by an investor. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, it's not, we don't have the money to do it. So, uh, and shout out to, uh, to Tapehead for anybody that doesn't know our old friend. Uh, he's in Saipan, China, and, and uh, Scott Catino has bars and retribution. So, you know, all, all, all we're looking for is a partner that believes in what we're doing and wants to help spread our music to the public. And then if people enjoy it, awesome. And if people don't like it, then it's not for you. Look, the hard, the punk rock hardcore market is only as big as it is. And we're just happy to be a part of it. Honestly, you know, just we like, what do you think? Like, you think, I don't think I'm going to feed my family off this. You know, I'm doing it because I love it. Absolutely. Why else would you do anything? Exactly. You know, if you're going to get up in the morning, are you going to go to a job that you fucking hate every day? Go do something you love to do. Like, you're wasting your life if you're not surrounding yourself with people that you love. And if you're not putting yourself in a place where you're doing things you love to do. That's it. That's life. There's no big secret. Absolutely. Talking about some release, uh, we're going to play a song from uh, the last release of Angel Crew from, uh, Killer. from Danny. Uh, Crucify Me. Uh, that's not the last video. I think that's just the one before. Uh, but it's okay. Let's play Crucify Me. That's... Uh, from the last album, 30, uh, 13, that's, yeah. 16, oh, no. 16. Sorry. <laughs> 16. Uh, came out on uh, Strength Records, the label from... Uh, uh, Strength Records from uh, Roger, from uh, Agnostic Front, Roger Miret. Yeah. And so, all of uh, that also yeah. start that label. Uh, we played a song from Death Net by Noise, uh, tribute to one of Chromax when we start, because I think everybody who's been to hardcore, Note what Ono means to the yeah, heart. Of course. Of course. Uh, okay. And the crew crucify me. And the crew. Uh, That's that fucking is, hard, uh, man. Holy shit. <laughs> oh, That's a good song, man. Holy crap. Thank you. Thank you very much. Now, listen. You had a record, like, uh, the record, what was the record before this last record? Was there, like, uh, a gap? Crew? No, no, with Edge Crew, uh, what we do is uh, we come out with, uh, every five, uh, four or five years, we come out with a new CD. You come out with a new, like, every four or five years? Yeah, four or five years. We, we have stuff that we want to own. We get people from Backfire. We get people from other bands, and uh, we're just busy. So every four or five years we get together and we do some stuff and then we do a record and then uh, that's it. The, the, the previous record came out on um, on uh, Jimmy Jeff, uh, Hatebreed. Yeah, Jamie, uh, yeah. Yeah, Stillborn. So, uh, so, and uh, the last one was, uh, was uh, Agnostic from Roger Strike record. Right. And, uh, every time, every time we have really good distribution and uh, and also, but, uh, we, we do we do this like a, like every four years. We don't want right. to commit ourselves and uh, go on tour for five, five weeks and stuff. So uh, so uh, that's it. This is about age cool, man. It's just a, it's a, it's, it's just a, a side it, project. It's like a family. Yeah, it's a family. It's like a course. family. You guys, you yeah. love to do it together. You get together yeah, every. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But we don't we, we don't want to stay together too long because we get sick of each other. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, but, but but that's the idea, was it? Uh, you know, we get, we get stuff to do, and, uh, and uh, so we don't have to be um, implicated all the time in in, uh, in that you know, in the intro. So it's good. Yeah, man, oh. it's great. That's great. Yeah, and also, also, the energy is coming in. You know, when you don't see each other, we don't see each other for 
for too long time, and then you will get back to the studio and we just go, okay, we're gonna do a new racket, and then everything is spontaneous. We write the lyrics in the studio on on the spot, and the music is one. We just go, that's it, you take your guitar, we just sit down, take one or two days, we put all the music together, and then I write the lyrics with a uh, whisper and, and we just come up with it. Holy yeah. shit. Yeah. Man, yeah, I, yeah, I, yeah. I, I gotta be honest, that is whew. Well, thank you. Thank That's you, your process. You know what I mean? That's incredible. Yeah. But we don't need to, to practice together. We never practice. Because we get people from Holland, from, from Germany, from everybody, and then we just come. And uh, everybody knows when they have to play guitar. We come on stage, we choose a line check. Everybody knows the stuff, and we just play the concert. That's it. Yeah. You want to know something funny? Uh, over the last, like, whatever, 10 years, I've played, like, maybe, I don't know, like, maybe, maybe 10 to 12 dog eat dog shows right whenever dog eat dog plays in the states which is like we play like once a year right uh maybe twice a year uh we did this is hardcore a few years ago uh we'll book a show like at uh a, like a tri-state spot and they'll you know they'll do like advanced tickets it's more like a like a party but the same thing I, I went to Europe with them and played like four or five shows, like maybe, I don't know, seven, eight years ago. Uh, Roger couldn't play. I've never rehearsed with them. Like, even after all those years, they'd be like, all right, here's the set list. And we just go out and I just play this. Like, you know, they don't, we play old shit. You know what I mean? When yeah. we do it. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, but I get that. And you just come down, you do your stuff, and that's it. If you know your stuff, you don't have to be afraid. You just can, you know, all right, you know, you get, you get to practice as a, at home, man. You know, when you go to practice place, it, it's not, you're not there to, to, to start learning how to play. You just play home, man. And you just come. And when you would come on stage, yeah. you just do your stuff, and, and that's it. And that's you it. know what it is, though, man? I, that's, yeah. you're, dealing, you're dealing with professionals and people that you like to be around. So it's like, show up. Do your yeah. job and do your job, that's it. and be yourself. Put on the performance, yeah. you know? Yeah, exactly. And I think, I think it's great because every time we go on stage, we get so much energy. We, we don't see each other like like five days a week practicing songs that we get, you know, we get bored of. And uh, like like I used to, to be with Deviate and I knew all those songs. And every time they were, the, the song would come up and I would like, oh my God, not this one again. And right now, every single song is like a fresh you just come, you do the stuff, even in the studio. You just come and you listen to the record after, and you're like, you never heard those song. Because because they were made on the spot. Yeah. Crazy. And then, and then you hear that and you say you say there's so much energy and that's it. And, and it's right there. And and after you practice a little bit, you know, I'm I'm doing my lyrics and stuff and, and whatever, and we'll go on stage and we'll play this song and so much energy, which is don't give a fuck. Actually. That's you know, it's gotta the, be it's gotta be like a high too, that you just yeah. come together. And you create something, and now yeah. when you leave, when you finish that recording process, it's like, look what we just created. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's it. And you get the package. You get the package, and and nobody's expecting like uh, expecting. We, we don't expect to be in the next ACDC or the next Metallica yeah. or the next uh, the, ne the next uh, the next whatever. So yeah. we just put out the record. People like it. They don't like it. You know, in a sense, I'm not going to say anything, but I don't give a shit. Yeah, because I'm 50, I'm 54, and I, I get stuff to do with it before four years. This is a deal. We just get together. Now we're gonna put a new um, a new uh, video clip together. You will see it maybe in uh, one or two months. We're working on it. That's uh, and, and and we're gonna do this, and it, it's great, and we have fun, and we, just, we do the thing, we put it out, and we'll see how it goes. But uh, we don't look forward for uh, for big things because it's not gonna happen anyway. Right. It's like you know, I've been to Japan, I've been to the States, I've been uh, I've been everywhere with Deviate and, and all the bands. I mean, uh, all I can you go. I mean, uh, you, we don't have as good as Metallica, or we don't have the infrastructure, to right? Make, to, you know, you know to, to to leave everything, to leave my family, to leave all the stuff and go on tour for one year. I mean, Asia is it's okay. You say it's hard, but I mean, I mean, it's it's a, it's not a big band in the sense that uh, okay. And your crew is and your crew, and we get respect from from a lot of people. But yep. I mean, stop right there. Yeah, stop right there. No, uh, you won. Thing, I think, 
Yeah. No, you yeah. won. That's it. You won. You're doing something that you love to do, and that's it. It's over. Yeah. That's it. That's it. That's so over. We talked about that before. Like, yeah. I'm, I'm, I can't believe that I'm able to do something that I, I, I love what I'm doing. Like, I, I really feel like I won. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. it's, uh, yeah, exactly. if, if other people enjoy it, that's going to be awesome. But, yeah. Yeah, yeah, but I'm not looking forward for anything. But at the same time, I'm happy when it's happening. So, you know, when Jimmy just uh, from Hate Reads is like, I want to put out the record. And I'm like, yeah, okay, good, good. Jackpot. Good. good. Yeah, and, and then you, know, you go, okay, and then, uh, then uh, you know, you follow the family from Hate Reed, and then you do a lot of shows with them, and, and you do stuff, and it's part of the experience and, uh, and also part of uh, part of your life. And that that's what keeps me going since 1986. Yeah, man. That's what I'm. Being, that's what I. That's what I'm fucking doing. I mean, uh, that's what I'm fucking doing. But, you know, after '69 and Deviate and other bands and then Angel Crew and then I can't. You know, I cannot do anything else anyway. Yeah, so this is what you do, man. I can't do nothing else. I mean, uh, except going to work and and, and that's it. But, uh, but uh, the other thing I can do, I believe, a little bit good is music. So I just keep doing that. And, uh, you know, the rest of it. That's good. awesome, man. That's, that's why you have to come. That's down. awesome. You have to come down, man. Yeah, you have to come down to Europe, man. So we can, no Listen, Danny, here. this is like, <clears throat> you know, I, I, I've said it before, but like, I started two bands in my life that I was a part of starting. Like, I really feel like Kings Never Die is the third band that I ever started with. You know, like we started. So, the second we're afforded the opportunity. If, if if things keep progressing the way they're going, if we're given the opportunity to play, you know, this is like, this is not like some side project, right? Like, yeah, yeah, like yeah. we're there, you know. Unfortunately, yeah. this pandemic has kind of interrupted everything that's fucking gone on. But you know what? Yes. Listen, we have time. We have time. Like, there's no rush. And, and I have to be honest, this time period has really allowed us to just to create even a better product like mm -hmm. it is given it gave me for for five months i sat in my office with garage band and i rewrote songs and i wrote new song and i was like literally in like the habit of writing and i gotta be honest i didn't have much else to do I couldn't work. I didn't work for four months. I had no business. I was dead broke. You know what I mean? I got no government assistance. So the only thing I had was my guitar. And I, I taught myself how to use GarageBand so I could, you know, get some ideas down. Other than that, voice notes. Yeah, you know? that's what I'm saying. It's what I'm saying. Use the time which is allocated to you for the time being. Because, because uh, you know, it's the same for everybody. We're not going to go on tour for, uh, I believe, another year. So let's take the time which is which is give, uh, given to us to yeah. just produce and, and do yeah. some records and do some music. Yeah. And I yeah. think it's, it's a good time for us because, you know, so, so you know, yeah. I think it's, it's producing is the key. So, yeah. And, that, and, and, and that's what, like, that's, I feel like, you know, we, we've kind of taken advantage of the time. Like, mm -hmm. We did two studio sessions during COVID, came out of it with, uh, with a little EP, and we started recording our record like two, three weeks ago. And now we're at the point where we're recording two days a week for the next six weeks. Like we are literally, uh, I think you're right. I think January, February, March of 2022. And uh, by that time, obviously this record that we're creating is going to be there for people to hear and it's going to be released and uh if, if I know, everything i know i know you're saying i know you're saying i'm not i'm not going to be uh, the the big wise motherfucker over here but uh, i know you're saying that uh, you don't understand anything about facebook and you don't understand anything about promotion i think you should have some people which are doing that job for you because i don't understand anything about it but I got some, I guess we have some little kids and whatever, they love doing this and they just go on the forum, they go, they, they, they put the link, they do a promotion and it's, it's actually it doesn't cost any money, it's just a whole bunch of people which are dedicated because without doing this and just saying, just saying, okay, we put out the stuff and we'll see how it goes. 
at the same time, you have to do, you know, when you've done the video clip, so you have a lot of big, uh, I mean, you involve yourself in doing the video clip, you should be able to have this video clip on every platform and everywhere that people should be able to see it. It's not about fucking making money, it's about the name and it's also about the product. Because if you do this next time, next time that you're going to come out with something, if you have a lot of views, if you have a lot of people which are committed to to, to your product, then next time maybe people will give you money, will give you a little bit to be more comfortable and do a little bit of uh, marketing or maybe a better studio or maybe, uh, you know, buy you a little book. Right. So it, it's a fucking vicious circle, man, because, because actually I'm 54 and I'm like, oh, I don't give a shit about those forums and whatever. But at the same time, this is how we live now. Yeah. You know, it, it, we are too fucking old for this. So, yeah. so we have to we have to understand that not even you need to do your music, but it's either you understand exactly what's going on with all those uh, social media, or you don't. But if you don't, leave someone who does. Yeah. Helping you. See what I mean? You know. And, and I I'll, I'll tell you this. this as well, but, uh, I'll tell you this. I had I had somebody about a year ago that was going to that basically we gave the lot like they were going to help us with social media and you want to know what they did danny they started tagging like tour companies and tagging record companies and they and i started getting messages from people saying why are you tagging me in your post why are you doing and i and you want to know something it wasn't us. We we trusted somebody to do it for us, yeah. Yeah, and they were. Up. It it wasn't cool, man. They were overstepping it, their boundary. Uh, uh, it's like it's like it's like giving money to somebody and it's going to rip you off. And at the same time, right right now, just like, you know, you you, you you shut that motherfucker down, and then uh, then you just uh, you just have somebody who's trustful, and yeah. understands what's going on, and do it. It. it's not a bad experience which is gonna is gonna help you out anyway so it's i'm this is my belief man it's a, it's even it's a it's a hard fucking work to have your name and your brand out your brand out you have great musicians you have a lot of names which are around you you have a lot of support you should use that fucking platform and that, that base that that, that that fan base and and, and just do this yeah. i think it's a great product and you should do it you yeah, know, I mean, because, listen, we because, we because, because it can only go good. More people know you, then it will be. So can you hook me up with somebody that you think is reliable? <laughs> can you yeah, help me out? Well, I can. We can have a separate conversation on how I see and yeah. how you you know how we can how you can do this. But right now, just to use for example, just why don't you come up on strike uh, on strike records? On what? If was about, on strength. Racket, strength, 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 uh, strength, strength. Rackets from uh, Roger, uh, from Roger from Agnostic Front. Right. That's his. That, that's his record company. Right. Why don't you ask him to do to, to, to maybe work with him? You know, you know, Stigma. Yeah, he's of got course. Record, he's got a great record company, and uh, maybe he can help you out. He can hook you up. He's got also the marketing side. He's got also the social networking side. He's, he's got also the the media. What am I saying? The streaming, the streaming, I, I, Apple, and and, and all the shit around. They, yeah. can, they can hook you up, man. Yeah. They can hook you up. And I, and, right. And I'm, you know, I right. would be glad. I, I, I can help you out and we can have a different conversation all the time, man. It's yeah. You know, right now, uh, this, this, it's what we live for EP is, um, is being handled by Blood Blast. All right. That's, uh, that's the distribution, the digital distribution. Right. What is it? Blood blast. Let Blood blast. Guess. Yeah, it's like the subdivision of nuclear blast, like the digital okay. end. Okay. Right. And we are also working with Gordian uh, PR. Do you, are you familiar with Gordian PR from Germany? Yeah, no, but uh... I'm sending you the link uh, to Strength Records, Dan. Okay, great. Awesome. Yeah. But right. uh, there's somebody, but, but uh, if you want, we can have a different conversation. I mean, I mean a separate conversation because we'll be yeah, of course, we'll, about, we'll, we'll, we need to talk about music, though. Yeah. But, uh, but what I'm saying, yes, 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 with pleasure. I mean, I mean, I can, I can hook you up with uh, with some stuff, and we can, we can check out. Yeah, that would be outstanding, man. 
no, no, there's no problem, man. You know, it's not like I'm gonna help you, but at least I can give you my 54 experience, motherfucker. Yeah, believe me. Hey, listen, Danny. Look at Danny. Him. Trust yeah, me. That's it. Trust that's me. For whatever I've done, I, I am, you know, personally, I'm, you know, I'm, I fly a little blind. I really don't know. You know, I, I, I don't know. I understand. I understand. Yeah. I, understand. I fly blind too, man. Yeah. But, uh, you know. If, if, if I can you know. just uh, uh, have, a, have an intake on that, because I, I, I think I'm the youngest hardcore yeah. fan mm -hmm. here. <laughs> I'm 30 <laughs> and uh, I, I worked in communication before as a community manager and all. You have to do, you have to be on the platform. If you want a fan base that it's stable, that, that is good, that like your work, you have to be on the, on the platform, but you have to find somebody who's um, familiar with your work, familiar with the scene and who can, I don't know how to say, who can, uh, like, there is a transmission of values in hardcore music and you have yeah. to find someone who can do that, who can do the, this transmission of values, uh, not only your music, but only the values of hardcore and yeah, of of punk and, uh, and all of that. So don't put your money on someone uh, just just knowing how uh, Facebook work or uh, Instagram work yeah, and all yeah. of that. Just <laughs> find someone who like the music, who like the scene and can spread, spread the message. That's it, man. It That's spread it. the word. It's not marketing. It's, yeah, it's, it's not marketing. It's you have to you have to love the scene to do to do this. You, you have it to. Does. It does. You've been in the scene for so long, man. And I'm telling you, don't put any money out of your pocket, man. Don't put any money out of it. Just like it doesn't make sense. You're gonna spend a two, or three, or four hundred on a, on Facebook. It's not gonna work, man. No, just there are people to dedicated, ready dedicated, to spread the work. Yeah. just like that. Dedicated, dedicated people around you should do the work, man. It's just a, Spread the words, spread the words, spread the words, and uh, and also maybe sometimes you know you spend two or three hours trying to contact uh, this one and this one and try to push your product. And for the rest, you know, it can be okay. But don't spend any money on this. It's not your, no. uh, it, no. it, it's not you that that's supposed to spend money. You know, for maybe people, the end, you, yeah, Dan. You know, uh, for people like us who came from uh, a time where we used to look the things on a record to find some new bands and stuff. Now, it's a total new area. Uh, I still yeah, feel sure. a little bit how we discover bands, you know. Before, you need to buy the album or to have a friend who get the album to make a, a copy. A copy, we, yeah. We used to make tapes. That's how we used to do it. Me too. Now, with uh, all those media, yeah, that's a lot. I, I cannot imagine uh, to live in this time if I would have been uh, 13 or 14 years old. I used to write to some bands in the US with a, a couple. Uh, so they get the money, they send me the, I get some Vatican Commandos uh, EP. Yeah. Uh, you know, the first Mobis band. I bought it that way because I found it in a fanzine. Now, everything is just, is just there. You can go, you can listen to all, to everything. And yeah. I think they're right. <laughs> uh all those media uh i think that's incredible uh i know some older people say that sucks but no that's great because but that that's incredible because you can choose the artists that you that you can support yeah. you, you can you can choose who you are living for and who right. you are putting your money on and uh, all that that site, sites like Patreon and all these crowdfunding yeah, yeah. things and all it's it's incredible because you you know what the artist can do and you you put everything on yeah. them because you like them and you, you want you them you want, you want their kids to be okay you want the families to be okay yeah you want the yeah. to be okay yeah, you want the music to be okay and, like I, I, yeah. I I'm a big believer man like now is I, the I time <laughs> now is the time to give back sure. to these bands and, 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 that have given you so much. I agree like, with that. Not, you know, really, because uh, I can't, I can't stress that enough. I, I, I'm, and I do it myself. I do it myself. You know, I. It's one. You know, it's, it's like one thing to say, uh, 
it's the voice of a generation, but these bands that have been around as long is the voice of several generations. Yeah, yeah sure. It is. And, and, and as, as, as a younger punk, I can, I yeah. can say this, and, and Fab and me, we have different nice, tastes. It's really nice to see that. It's nice we, to see we that. We have that. You know, that. You know what, I still, <laughs> and, uh, I, I was making Maybe money. you're going to pass it on to somebody as well. Pass that yeah. Course, you know? <laughs> so, yeah. But, but uh, you know, I was working in the, in, in the shop, and uh, I'm working this Ikea, I'm sure you know that. Yeah, I'm of course. In the, and, and you got this guy, he's coming, he's coming up to me. He said, oh, my God, and, you know, the singer from DV8. Can I take a, a picture with you? And I'm like, yeah, all right. And he says, it's for my mom. Oh, that's cute. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, listen. I'm, I'm not even kidding. I'm, I'm not even kidding. He said, it's for my mom. And I, and I was like, all right. <laughs> all right. You're talking about generation <laughs> right there, man. It's like, yeah, okay, your mom used to come to the concerts and stuff. Okay. I could have been your dad, man. <laughs> That's crazy. That's crazy. But, you know, the crazy thing is this. Like, <clears throat> you know, like, the EP came out today, right? Like, today's the, the release day. And I got a text this morning at 4 a.m. that the EP on iTunes, right, in Germany, it was, like, number 15. It entered the chart at 15. In right. Poland, it was number five. In Italy, it was, and I'm saying to myself, how how is that possible? Like, how did it where's, even? Where's the money? Nah, there's no. Come on, man. You get like <laughs> half a penny. Because it's not even. That's why you know. Because it's true. Where's my money? Uh, yeah. You, you know, know what? what? Where's the money? Hit the road, man. You got to play live. You got to like hit the street. That, you know that. <laughs> through so many generations of hardcore that music shouldn't stay. You know, I started hardcore, I discovered hardcore music when I went to see the Dead Kennedys in 83. Oh, with one of my favorite Oprah bands. Was MC. And I was, my friend said, Oh, that song, that's too loud. And I was like, No. That's too loud. <laughs> what? <laughs> that's my first hardcore gig. MDC that's some MC. gig for your first gig, man. That's and incredible. I was a right. 12 or 13 years old kid. Uh, you must have been and in my life changed. Everything changed after that, right? Yeah. You know, yeah everything uh, changed after that. Huh? I have so many gigs in uh, in Belgium. I lived for three or four years in New York. Uh, came back here. I'm 50 years old. And I'm, the music, everybody told me would disappear. Oh, you're going to change. I'm 50 years old. And I, I created that show because... I didn't want it to be an interview show. I wanted it to be like talking uh, at the bar with people. People yeah. can listen. If you have, by the way, if you have questions for, for Dan, for Danny or Pat, just shoot them up on a chat. And that's the reason we try, we try to do that. We know there's no money in it, but we just, come on. It's all life. It's all life. Like, uh, no, that's uh, you cannot get out of it. No. And, I'm just uh, saying if I'm if I'm hitting uh, 15 in uh, in Poland, I start asking myself question. I've never been that high. What's that? <laughs> I'm saying if I'm hit, hitting the the shots number 15 in Poland, I would be like, uh, okay, uh, you know, it's good, no? Yeah, yeah I, I like you know what, Danny? I'm we're just we're grateful. Like I, I don't, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, yeah. I, I have, I have no idea, you know, I, I, I didn't expect yeah. it or, you know, when, but, uh, but now they have like these iTunes charts, which basically tells you who's, you know, like, is your song being downloaded or not? So obviously like, you know, the songs are being downloaded. So, you know, we're just grateful that people are being open-minded enough just to listen is, uh, you know, it's it's humbling, it really is, man. It's like yeah, no, no, no. you know. It's so if you saw the Godfathers of Hardcore mu uh, movie, of course, uh, that movie was in the top five of the uh, music, uh, the movie, the movie about music seen on uh, iTunes. That's crazy, a hardcore movie. Yeah, in the top five mm -hmm. with people like uh, Amy Winehouse and stuff like that. Yeah, I mean, this music is really something and people love it. It's not going on a big media, but it's there. Well, and look, people are 
people want to connect with some with something in life you have to have some people just watch tv for hours and hours and uh, you know what it's if the music if the music touches people and the mm -hmm. music uh makes it you know help somebody get through their day like that's it's an art it's art you know we're creating something and we're offering it to somebody else to listen to like it's it's kind of beautiful, you know. Yeah, mm -hmm. I I think uh, if if I may, with everything going on uh, right now, people are coming back to punk and, and to to punk hardcore because it it's a music very it's a very violent music. It's a, it's a very uh, expressing music and it's and reality it's very, and it's reality and it's very good for yeah. people oh. right now. People need something really violent just to get their head off everything going on and uh, i right. see a lot of my friends my age my generation coming back to punk and hardcore because yeah, because that, that's what we need and, and i think see that as well yeah, yeah and, and the I think message, it's, it's, the right message, the like, message that's never gets i've learned, learned. like if you're gonna old. if you're gonna write or create a song mm -hmm. what's the message what are you saying and I'm not, I'm at the point in my life where if I'm going to write and I'm going to introduce something to other people, there yeah, has sure. to be a story or a message. It has to have meaning to me. And I want, I want, I want to offer it to other people. Mm -hmm. And, and this record we're doing right now, every song has like per deep personal meaning. It, it's, it's like storytelling to a certain yeah, degree. Yeah, sure. And you know that's different. Uh, Thirty years ago, I wrote songs about whatever a, a, a 16, 17, 18 year old kid was thinking about, and now I'm writing songs about what a fifty year old man is thinking. Yeah, about. but but what's it? What is really interesting? Uh, so I'm, I'm a teacher. I, I work with the with, with the the youngs and the teenagers, and yeah. I see that the message you were writing when you were 16, 17, is basically the same that a, a teenager of, uh, of 2021 are, are thinking. They are also very tired, very exhausted by the, the politics and the words and the things. And the, the, there, is, there is the same message. The, the, the base message is the, is the same. It's, it's the same. Right. And that's why I think people are coming back to uh, this kind of music to, to express themselves. Right. And it has that, the that's, a, that's a very. It has the ability to, to reach across its generation, can reach yeah. across generations of people, in connection and make a connection for people that are like minded. Yeah, sure. And because the, the make, topics were different. Yeah, when you make that connection, that's what yeah. we call it culture. Yeah, yeah that's sure. Culture. And and that's it. The, the topics are different, but the the values and the are, are the same, and the the fights are are the same, or they are very similar. And, that's, and you that's see it. You see it. I can, I can it. sit on a train, right? Yeah. And I'm I'm on the train, and I see another punk get on the train or whatever, sit down, without saying a word to each other. We give each other that look. We already yeah, know. But, but like, that's we're already it. saying to each other. That's it. You know we know it. We already. Yeah. We, we, I know what you're into. I know what you got. You know, yeah, and you know it. there's a connection right there. And nobody else on the train is like you too, you know, yeah. and you know it. And you sit across and you're like, I got you. You know, and, 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 and Danny, you Danny, am I wrong? But isn't that what we're trying to do through music, right? We're trying to make a connection. And you could, when, when you have the ability to create this music uh, and you can create a message or a story or if you can get your point across, like it's really empowering. Like through a song, I can now send a message to somebody that might be in need. You know what I'm saying? We have this song, Minor Threats, that just got released on this EP. And the song is really about setting a good example for the youth. Like you don't have to be a piece of shit your whole life. You know, like it's you're a grown man. Set a good example for young, impressionable minds. And you know, it's minor threats. You know, we got to keep our minor threats away from you. 
Uh, yeah. You know, sure. you might be dumb, ignorant, or stupid. You may not give a fuck about yourself, dude. Sure. We got to keep our minor threats away from you. So it's a story about both sides of it. And it's a hundred, it's a, it's a minute and 40 second punk rock song. You know what I mean? But yeah. to me, yeah, yeah. it's important. It's powerful. Yeah, sure. And it is. That's fueling. Let's, that's let's fueling finish. my writing process right now. You know, that's that's, that's very interesting. Very, very, very yeah. interesting. Because I get all the songs from uh, that new EP, so people listen to this song, guys, and uh, go buy it. Yeah, yeah. My friends. Well, I, I mean, and there you go. Nice. Hey. See what I'm talking about? Those drums are up front. <laughs> sure. <laughs> I got like a little uh, speaker here and I can hear those drums kicking through. Yeah, man. Nice snap. You know, but it, I got to tell you, that's something that, uh, come back, come back. that's something that Danny, Danny has really done with all of the songs and the lyrics on the record that we're recording right now is, <clears throat> you know, I think he noticed he's picked up on the fact that the songs have real meaning. And he's pushed us to a point where he's like, well, what are you saying there? What do you mean? Aren't you saying, uh, 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 I give my life for you? Or are you just saying, I give my life, don't let go? Don't let go of what? Who's that for? Like he questions everything. And it's it's been like incredible to have somebody that's that's not just a drummer but is really like you know it's it's like this record is being produced by three four five different people truly because everybody's interest is only for us to make the greatest possible uh product and tell the greatest possible story and I've never really been involved in something like that before. Like he's pushing me to a level I've never been to. And our singer, Dylan Gaudino, is so talented. He has an incredible presence and voice about him. But we're forcing him to be better. You know what I'm saying? Like we're, we're, we're forcing him to realize you don't just have to sing like this. You could do this. You could do this. And it's really been incredible, man. It really is. It, it's been incredible. And that's, uh, you know, I think that that is going to be evident in the final product. I think it's impossible for people to not connect with the record that we're making. I really do. I mean, unless they're dead. Like, I don't know how somebody can't connect with, with the, the message and the music and you know, I, I think it's kind of can't miss. I really do, you know? So we're going to take our time since we have the time, yes. obviously. We're going to take our time and we are going to like literally drop the absolute greatest thing we've ever done. You know, like, so, you know, if it wasn't for COVID, like Danny said before, we wouldn't be able really to do this the way we're doing it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, you know, it's yeah. it's a great life lesson. It's cool you're able to yeah. take something in the situation that we're in right now and then flip that and turn it into something as positive as what you're positive. Doing. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Everybody has everybody in this knows somebody has lost somebody. Knows somebody that has lost somebody. Everybody has suffered financially. I don't know about you guys, but like I got my ass fucking ripped. Like yes, I, yes. I haven't worked six of the last 12 months. Like yeah. I have, I have a family to support. You know what I mean? Thank God. My wife is a school teacher. You know what I mean? That, that, you know, thank God we have health benefits. Thank God. Like I'm, I keep saying thank God, but the reality is I'm just so grateful for what I do have. And I can't sit around the rest of my life worrying about the things I don't have. And I've really, I almost feel like in the last couple of years, I've like grown up. I've like turned, I'm like, I'm like an adult now. You know what I mean? Uh, 
what I say, I want to make sure I'm saying the right thing. I have, you know, I don't want to get into politics and shit like that because I have opinions that are, you know, completely maybe mine and mine. You know, you never talk about politics, but like I'm looking at things differently. Like, do you look at the news and do you believe what they're telling you? Like, are you that fucking dumb that you're believing what you're seeing on the news as factual? Oh, man. <laughs> like, do you realize that about 30 to 40% of everything on the news is paid content? Like, wake the fuck up, you know? And and I, I don't, I'm not going to speak about any government that you guys deal with, but in our government, I don't put, like, look, my dad's dead. This is not fake. This virus is real. Where the fuck did this virus really come from? Like, is it, nobody wants to question the fact that 17 years ago, they were looking for a, uh, they were looking for a vaccine for for, for coronavirus. 17 years ago, they started. Isn't it a little odd that coronavirus is everywhere and all of a sudden in nine months they fucking created a vaccine like come on you don't create a vaccine in nine months unless you've been working on it you know so i don't know man i'm i'm not uh i'm not crazy conspiracy theorist because i don't think it's conspiracy theory i think it's fact you know what i mean i think it's a fact and and we're all being injected with uh uh with this and it's not even fda approved it's not approved by the fda in the united states you know like who made that fucking decision so look i my we all hope that people can be happy and healthy and safe and let's get on with the fucking show man because like this is you know enough is enough now i think that i I think that economically things are gonna blow up for like if, if you're working on the projects that you're working on right now, projects that I, I know other people working on right now, having the time to do what they're doing, I think that this coming back together, this opening up again, is gonna be a new door and a new sure. surge of like energy and uh, people doing things. Like they're like, you know what? I never thought I'd do this, but now I'm gonna try it. Why not? Yeah, I'm creativity, gonna, man, it's creativity. Gonna be, it's gonna be, uh, I think it's gonna be full force. It's gonna come back with a, with a boom. For all of us, I think that I think uh, you know, and like she was t- saying earlier, with younger people coming into this again, I'm, I'm seeing this yes. as well. A lot of younger people are picking up on this again. You know, like, yeah, they they want something more in their life than what they can get in, say, pop culture. Maybe well, the yeah, they 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 want a message, okay. a positive message that they can relate to. They want to see uh, the reality of when shit can go bad, they want to see what you could do to change it. Like yeah. Young people are highly intelligent. Their sure. minds have not been distorted yet, right? right? I mean, how many times can you listen to a country song about the girl and the truck and the fucking road and the dirt and the, fu- like, yeah. you know, like, you know, it, it's funny, like, I was listening to a podcast. I love, I mean, I, I, I love listening to podcasts. Yeah, you do. <laughs> and uh, Craig Ahead said in the podcast, he goes, you know, I don't, I'm not going to go into all this again. He's like, but we've been writing songs about this for 25 years. Sure. And he's right. You know, when you listen, like, we're fucking pup. We're like government puppets, man. That's what we are. We're like fucking hanging on us. A- well, you know, you're fucking watching the news. You're believing that bullshit. Everybody's locked up. Everybody's inside. You know, like I gotta be honest. I wouldn't be surprised if this was organized by all by the entire all the world leaders organized this shit. Let's fucking control the puppets for a while. Let's put fear in everybody's mind and let's get the control back. And then little by little, we'll let the puppets out. Little by little, you know, like. It, it, it makes you think you know the biggest i think one of the most important thing in hardcore was ronald reagan in the 80s yeah reagan years make it i think now 
it's step two after Reagan came COVID. And I think this, what happened now, gonna influence so many things, uh, so much hate, because we're all tired of it, you know? Yeah. In Belgium, uh, the tattoo shop, because as hardcore people, we always close to the tattoo shop. I think everybody got tattoo here. Yeah. And uh, they just had to make so many uh, <laughs> expenses for the money. And uh, last week here in Belgium, those shops been closed down again. We have friends uh, who had some tattoo shop and now they cannot walk. They receive nothing. They still have to pay the rent. They still have to pay everything. And those guys just cannot walk. I'm not yeah. a start. I have a regular job. I'm working from home on a computer. Okay, that's, I'm a lucky one. Yeah, but you're I a lucky guy, man. People, uh, don't. I know Pat, because uh, I, I played with him as a DJ at Otto's, uh, and I know that's something important for him. And he couldn't walk. Yep. Uh, I don't know how yeah. is it is for you now, Pat, I mean, but it's I mean, crazy. Like, like, like everybody else here and what Dan was saying before, about how you lost work. I lost work. I had a union job. I lost, and uh, I was fortunate enough to, you know, to get some type of government assistance. And with that, I've been able to finance the broadcasting I've been doing. So I've been broadcasting. Uh, I have three, three different broadcasts. One of them now that Autos is back open again. I do that. I broadcast live from Autos while people are there and for right. whoever can't show up. And mm -hmm. so that has actually put a little bit of food on the table it's helped me pick uh i tried to take a bad situation and turn it around four days into the, the lockdown because i knew it was coming i was like damn what would it be like if i just got a little show together maybe i should just try and do that and see what happens you know yeah. what i am really really happy with it the three shows together now and it's put a little bit of money in my pocket so i'm, I'm happy about that I learned to utilize it took the advice of my friends like yo you got to do this you know yeah, we were all we were all locked down. We had no place to go, nothing to do. And they told me, they said, "Listen, man, the music you're playing, it's keeping us alive. It's like we, you know, we know we got to be here on Thursday. We turn the stereo up, and we just chill around the house. We go on Zoom, drinks for everybody, and it's as close as we can get to each other at this point. But you know, it, it was really, really nice, really nice, and and it was nice to even meet more people from Europe." you know, who were tuning in and things like that. So I yeah, that's great, friends. man. Yeah. Made some friends, so yeah. Like, that, like that's a great thing about, uh, that's the, the, the one of the only great things in this, uh, in this COVID shit. Uh, it's, Agreed. uh, since we, we, since we began, uh, Bake Cell TV, like, we're on it today. Yes. I've met so many people from across the sea that from across the ocean that I would never be able to talk to you if it wasn't for COVID. Exactly. And exactly. that's that's really cool. I met I met so many cool artists and uh, people like uh, I, I've met Jimmy G from from Murphy's Law. Oh, yeah. What is that? I'm thirty. I'm, I'm I'm a punk kid, and I was like, okay, I'm talking with Jimmy G. That that's okay. Everything is okay. And. The, 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 that's one of the of the of the only great thing in this pa pan pandemic. That's we we. I am going to use again the word that Dan is saying a lot uh, this night, and I think it's a great word. It's the connection. Music is a connection, and uh, we love it for the connection that it makes between us and between our emotions and uh, and the people, and 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 that's that and. Right. If right. I have one thing to, to, to take from the pandemic, it's the, the, all the people that I've met and, and, and that's, yeah. that's great. <laughs> yeah. It's also, crazy, but like it's brought people closer together. Yeah, sure. I, that's it. That's like a, it. And so let me give you an example of what happened. I, um, a friend of mine, you know, like a, a lot of us lost our work, but a friend of mine works over at Con Ed and he works in the factory, which is down on the Lower East Side off of 14th Street. Yeah, works in that on that in that factory, and uh, he tunes into my broadcast, so he had the entire factory listening to the broadcast, you know. And I'm sitting here at home broadcasting from there, and it was nice because these poor guys they got to work, you know. They have to keep the lights on. That's what they do. They they, they make energy, you know. Yeah. So it was nice, 
you know, when uh, I saw people hit me up online, they were like, uh, you know, going to my Facebook page and trying to figure out when my next gigs were and everything like that. It was really nice. For those guys, nice. They, they work kind of late night sometimes. So I did a little thing for them, you know, for the whole entire factory, you know. And I think that's really cool, you know. That's very sweet. Like I that's said, sweet. I would have never known them. Yeah, uh, and, and that's it. We, we've been brought back together uh, for for this 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 only and same reason we we all we're all in shit and it, and it's very deep 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 shit and we don't know how deep it is but but we're together and and that's a good thing and, and that's yeah. one of the point we made that Brussels uh, TV because a lot of people uh, in the beginning were stuck home alone yeah sure so I, I I'm still <laughs> you cannot go to a bar and uh, that's every Friday we try to bring a kind of uh, rock bar to them so we can chat, we can be together. Uh, yeah. And it's, it keep the spirit alive. That's maybe a, a little cheesy to say that, but that's, I think what uh, it's about. And uh, try yeah. to, to get all the things uh, back together. But I can tell you, when that's, that shit gonna be out, that's gonna be a fucking crazy party. That's gonna be a blast, man. <laughs> the, the good stuff here, only the Belgian band gonna perform in the beginning because uh, to make a tour, uh, Dan, you know that you need times to make a tour and you need to be sure all the country of Europe are open. You cannot make a tour if it's only Belgium and Germany. You need to be able to play everywhere. And the good stuff is beginning, small Belgian bands who would be only able to play uh, 50 or 100 people, they're gonna make sold out gig in front of five or 600 people. And I think that's the same in New York. Uh, I think that when you're DJing, people are so hungry to be back in the shit. They're just gonna, they're just coming. I saw some picture uh, from yesterday uh, at the outside autos. Uh, and that was, I think John was there. I don't know if he's listening to us, uh, but John was back in New York and that's pretty cool. And, yeah, uh, yeah. Now you have another band uh, to play in, uh, in your playlist. That's Kings Never Die. Uh-huh. There, there you go. Actually, I'm going to, I'm definitely going to, yeah, check that out. I'm definitely, see, this one more thing for me to broadcast, see? <laughs> one more thing to broadcast right there. There you go, man. That's good. Yeah. And, uh, That's good. We had uh, a few weeks ago. We had Dean from uh, No Redeeming <gasps> Social Review. Oh yeah, was so uh, good. He was so sweet. I loved him. He was, was really great, awesome. And we played the the new song called uh, Red Balls. Yeah. That's so, on the that's new Red Balls last night. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> on the new King Never Dies, Red Balls is featured on one song. Yeah, well, it's it's rap on sing along track. It's it it honestly is exactly the same thing he would do if he was at one of our gigs. He would just stand up there and just sing along the whole time. Oh. So that's yeah, pretty much what we tried to recreate. I was he's like, all right, what am I doing? What am I'm like? I'm like, rap bones, just sing along, just sing along. Never far from the stage, right? Yeah. <laughs> Never far from the stage. Yeah. For the people who don't know uh, Redbone, he's one of the uh, pair of the New York hardcore scene. He's a crazy guy. He's the guy uh, jumping from the stage and walking on ahead of people. I remember him at the Bowery Electric at the Murphy's Law gig uh, four or five yeah. years ago. He's full of uh, energy, man. Full uh, of energy. Never stops. And uh, I think it's still heavy stories at uh, Generation. Oh uh, yeah, sometimes yeah. Seven, yeah, uh, he's into like <laughs> toys, and you know he keeps busy. He does Drew's show every uh, twice a week. He's on Drew's show with his toys, and so it's all good, man. It's all good. It was good to have him. You know, I know that it's something that he's wanted to do. Like he. He has always wanted to be a singer in a band or just be a part of the band. So I thought it would be, you know, just fun to do. And look, we have this, we have this medium in which we're, we, we're afforded to do whatever the fuck we want. 
Like I can have anybody I want, you know, like, so I thought we thought it was the right thing to do. And, and, uh, you know, we think the song is like, uh, uh, we, we thought the song was fitting for him to do. And the song is called, we got tonight to fight. And yeah. uh, we're going to play it now. Kill so, it. Also from the new uh, EP from Kings Never Die. All right, I just downloaded your album there. Killer, man. Yeah. Like I said on the chat, uh, this is not life. very hardcore uh, to say, but uh, to be here, uh, people in a show, watching a show, uh, love you all, guys. This is not very hardcore, but in fact, this is exactly what hardcore is about. It's about being together and uh this is the family we create that's so sweet that's so so sweet <laughs> uh i start listening to hardcore my everybody knows that like my favorite band is uh af and uh hardcore made us what we are today uh and i think we'll that's great to see uh at, uh most of us are uh, 50 or close to 50 years old over 50 years old and we're still in it and uh <laughs> that bring us something that nothing could have bring us and uh this is what hardcore for me is about uh it's about finding the family we didn't we didn't have or the friends and uh be with people we just like to be um and when you say that uh, about the young stuff, I'm a DJ too here in Brussels. And uh, the stuff, the most, the best feeling when you're a DJ is playing some uh, 80s shit and you have a kid of 20 years old coming to you, hey, what's that? Oh, this is this man, not this man. And that's great to see young kids uh, really into stuff who came in, into the 80s. And that's, I think that's great. And uh, this is what hardcore is about. Uh, old school, new school. Uh, you have some straight edge. You have, uh, I'm not a straight edge. Uh, I like to drink, I like to party. But I have party with people who are straight edge. And uh, that's make no difference. Uh, I can listen to the use of today, uh, to the CIV and all that shit. Uh, and I love it. And this is what hardcore is about. Uh, having a party with your friends, no matter what it is. And uh, hardcore keeps us, I think, strong. And I think that's a phase of, you know, it's two years ago, someone would have tell you about that COVID stuff. You wouldn't have believed that. You know, one year with the bar closed here in Belgium, uh, you cannot go out of your house. You cannot play a concert. Who would have, who would have believed that? No one, I think. And uh, well, we're still here. Well, we have no choice, man. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> like you have two choices: you could just bury yourself in a hole, or you could find a way to keep yourself happy. Yeah, like, that's it. There is, it's, it's, it's one or the other. You know what I mean? So. Uh, whatever it takes to to, uh, to keep your mind active and stay happy, that's what you got to do. You know. Oh, one of the bands that got me into what I what I lost was Warzone. Warzone was the thing that pulled me in. And after I had uh, met Ray Bees and saw what a kind soul he was at that time, like he kind of looked out for me. Uh, after that, I was, it was full force. After that, you know. Loved, loved their music, loved the way they played, you know, and uh, yeah, something, definitely something. Yeah. Great, man. That so, Danny. Uh, Warzone in the Freeze. In the, fr in the Freeze? Yeah. yeah. Really? Yeah, love the Freeze. So, Danny. Yeah. When, uh, when, when do you realistically think that What's the timetable, realistically, that you think, or or what are you hearing in terms of like actual, a, an actual tour taking place, an international act tour? 
No, seriously, seriously, I have, I have no fucking idea. It all depends on the uh, on vaccination we in, in the locking down again in Europe. So uh, nobody can travel, nobody can do anything. So all the festivals will be uh, shut down. So yeah. This year there won't be any festivals. Yeah. So uh, so uh, if anything, if anything goes good, I would say I would say uh, 2022. Yeah. And uh, yeah. I have, I have no idea, actually. And I agree with what you were saying about, uh, about uh, this is this is something which is happening at a higher level. But uh, I'm not going to start with that tonight. But um, but realistically, not this year. Yeah, no. it's, it's crazy, man. I know so, it's, uh, it's crazy, mm -hmm. man. But, uh, but uh, we, you know, if we can, if I can fucking travel to uh, to Spain. This, this summer, I would be happy. Just to tell you how much I believe in, uh, in uh, just playing a fucking show. If I can go on vacation for two weeks on, just in Spain and just shit out of it in the fucking sun, I would love to do it. But uh, but uh, seriously, for, for any concert for the moment, that's why we do the video clip and we're going to do maybe a new racket because, because we got to keep going on and at the same time. What, the only thing that makes me think positive is that when they open up, when everything will be open and we're gonna start festivals, people will go fucking crazy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, sure. And trust me, it's gonna be it's gonna be it's gonna be it's gonna be our best time, maybe maybe our, our best years. Yes. Yeah. When we when we go on stage, everybody will just go off and, and just be happy to have a festival to have concerts. Yeah. But, uh, well you, you know, you also have to remember that you the best atmosphere and festivals in the world are the festivals during the summer in europe like have you ever witnessed the festival in the states it, it it's it, it doesn't even compare it's not even in the same uh plat like the the close-mindedness of this country musically is you know I, we talk about this all the time uh every every podcast interview anything that i ever do i mean people always ask what is it about europe that attracts uh hardcore music or just alternative music in general and the the what it is is that you could have iron maiden headline and you could have madball play two bands before them you know what I'm saying? Like yeah, that would exactly. never happen in the United States of America. You know, uh, that everything is, is in a box. It's in a box. It's in a box. You know, there's so what? Ago. What? What? It's all been. of the people in countries in Europe have done is really offer open mind. You, you know, people's minds. It's almost like a sign of intelligence. Like European, not not to say that individually people are more intelligent but it's just an open-mindedness like people are 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 raised to to it's okay to like different things you don't have to sit in a box and it's really a beautiful thing and and uh yeah. to me that's why the music is so much more it, it's people are so much more passionate about music in europe as uh, as they are in the united states like it's just it's a different atmosphere uh you know that's, yeah, that's the only saying. thing i could ever explain to people I, or tell yeah, people when I went to Man, uh, you just said uh iron maiden and mad ball uh two or three years ago yeah Iron maiden played in spain and right before them on just on on another stage there was angel crew <laughs> then right danny yeah, we were playing before, before I even been there, yeah. yeah. See, I, I was in uh, Berlin for, uh, mm -hmm. I forgot the name of this festival. I think it was the Punk and Disorderly Festival. So a lot of New York, I know, uh, who did I run into? From the Templars. Ran into the lead singer from the Templars there. They actually played that day. And I ran into him and I said, hello. Man, there must have been 30,000 people at this place. I was like, this is insane. I was like, this is unbelievable. It was maybe 25 punk and hardcore bands and a group of kids walked up to me and they were like well what are you doing and i'm like 
uh, we just we're just in Berlin for the festival, and they're like, come with us. We're going to Warsaw. I'm going to Poland, Warsaw for another festival. It's like what? They just get up and go. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know? Well. <clears throat> You know, right now people don't have they don't have the free liberty to do that. So I could imagine when Danny says people are going to just ignite. You know, I can yeah, imagine right. what what that might be like, and and sure. and oh my God, like what like, what we like, would do to be able to be a part of that would just be like you know. I, You're going to be I right in the middle of it. Yeah. That's going to be great. Yeah, that's <laughs> it. <laughs> if I can if, if I can give you an image of this. Let's imagine when we, you know, we're playing, then all of a sudden the, electri the electricity is going down. No electricity, everybody's waiting for 20 minutes and, until the electricity comes back, yep. right? When the, electri the, the electricity is coming back on, people go off. Yeah. They just go completely crazy. That's, that's the image that we can have right now. They're just waiting until this shit is over and then they're just going to go off and there's a lot of festivals and, and a lot of shit. They, they can they can uh, hold us down for you know for more than, than than one year. It's not possible. It's not possible. If something's gonna happen. Yeah. It's, like I said, it's gonna be a new format. It's gonna be uh, it's gonna be new way we be able to see the music or whatever. But uh, but uh, I mean, you can't take that away from people. So it's gonna come back anyway. Yeah. yeah. All right, guys. Listen, I have I have to go because I got a dog. He's gonna you know, yeah. piss off. I actually have to. I, I actually have to. I have to go because I I was supposed to be home at, at six <laughs> o'clock hour time. But uh, listen, yeah. I, I I just want to say, first of all, thank you so much to Danny for coming on because it's so nice to to uh, to see him after all these years and uh and and danny i will ask I'll, I'll send you a message like on messenger we'll catch up man yeah please do yeah man. We'll i would, up, I would man. love to talk i'll i'll give you a call right. if you have some time yeah. I, I really i would appreciate the advice or time i really would yes, yes uh, it's no stress. yeah and 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 i gotta just you know thank you guys really this has been really enjoyable to just have a conversation about reality yeah, sure. yeah, and not yeah. like tell me a story about and how did you do you know i mean no, that's wait, all that, great but this is like this that's is what not the really thing about. though on the on this show that's not the thing <laughs> we yeah. like to talk yeah. like the corner of the bar you know yeah just, uh, say, that's say awesome. what you're saying and uh and that that's uh if you want to come back someday that. anytime <laughs> anytime you guys yeah, want yeah sure that's anytime good. thank you Good all right, you. thank you so much. Take care of yourself. All right. So you have a good man. Nice, nice meeting you, Pat, man. Take right. care of yourself. Cheers. All right. Good Let's keep you. in touch, man. Take care. And if you're done with yeah. a pure gold, uh, pure yeah, gold that's from also the last okay. TP. Uh, and uh, thank you so much for coming. Uh, oh, of course. I'm I'm so grateful that you that you uh, asked me to do it. I think uh, we made the first time. All right. With the biohazard yeah. tour. A long time ago, we had a party, and uh, now you're in a show, and that's great because that's what we tried to do with that uh, Brussels TV. And uh, thanks, thanks so much. Oh, uh, thank you. Much. All right, man. Hey, okay. it's what we live for. Yeah, that's it. That's Download it. it, steal it, buy it, whatever. CortexRecords.com. Sure. Right. <laughs> that's the that's the message. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Ben. Thank All you. Right, bye bye. That was something. Yeah. Cheers. Cheers.